Why did I do this? You may be wondering why there's a siren going off in my bedroom in the middle of the night, and frankly, at this point, I'm wondering the same thing. The short answer is, as it turns out, people aren't the only ones who enjoy chicken nuggets, and I've been entrusted with the survival of a particularly sweet batch of new chickens. <laughs> it's a parrot. I thought you had a chicken. So naturally, I went a bit overboard and created what I call Ford Box. When we left our last place, I had to demolish the chicken coop. The process was absolutely disgusting, but at least it was also incredibly difficult. That's right. So, I asked if I could have a bit of reprieve from dealing with chickens. So naturally, that meant being voluntold to go disassemble this coop a friend didn't want anymore, put it back together here, and roof it, among other things. You better be grateful, you daggum chicken. At this point, I did get to be more hands-off for a bit, and this thing ended up being the other half of our solution, but when the previous batch of chickens vanished under... <clears throat> mysterious circumstances, I was officially brought in to make them stop doing that. Which brings us back here. It seemed goofy to have two separate okayish coops, and this tree was the only thing standing between combining them into a straight up adequate structure, so down it goes. What should I turn this into? This siding was clearly temporary anyway, so I got rid of all that and mashed the coops together. Then, completely inaudibly, I explained that I plan to cut down the middle here and pull the netting to each side to securely connect the coops in the laziest way possible. Before fully putting it in place, I dug a trench around the coop so I could bury it down a bit to make it harder for things to dig in underneath. As for the door, we, um, need one. But thankfully I found some old fencing and was able to put together something a little bit more sturdy and door-like. We door. I need this. Now to heavily index in all things that enable future laziness, starting with a solar-powered chicken door that will hopefully suck a lot less than last time. These gutters lead into a giant water dispenser so that the chickens can enjoy a never-ending source of shingle-flavored water. We also did a whole lot of reinforcing the chicken fencing at the sides, but all of this only feels mildly ridiculous at best. So where is the crazy? Now onto the crazy part. This is a Raspberry Pi I got from PCB Way. The flavor was a little bit more on the metallic side than raspberry but it does allow us to train some fancy object detection that will specifically look for predators and A, scare them off, and B, warn us about them. Because there's nothing scarier to a possum than a disoriented human in their boxers at 1 a.m. Where we live, there are actually quite a lot of things that are going to want to eat our chickens. It's having a snack. But I put together a data set of all the predators we may encounter with a site called RoboFlow and then trained it locally so I could use it offline. This ended up taking more than a week and a half of overnight training each day. Thankfully, once the training finished, it did actually work. And pretty darn well at that. Let's see if it finds any predators. Really hope it does. I hope it does that. Yay! Things are finally thinging. Yay. Now to automate the act of yelling at predators. When a specific animal is detected, the device will play a voice line of me trying to scare it off. I see you, raccoon. You get out of here. You see a chicken feast? I see a raccoon hat. Then I added those voice lines into our program. Get out of here, hawk. No chicken dinner for you. I still see plenty of squirrels around. Go have one of them. Yes. Behold the danger noodle. So now it's time for the final component. An actual siren that'll sound when we detect a predator. Why do I have this? For chicken emergencies. Is that true? Yeah. But now, how do we get the alert from our device back to the house to sound the alarm? As cruel as it may sound, we didn't give the chickens access to our Wi-Fi network. So, to actually communicate all the data back to the house, we're using Blue's wireless. The data goes through this note card and can be routed in a bunch of different ways. If we weren't going over the top, Twilio could have made sense as an option so that we just receive a text when something bad happens, but Twilio does need a subscription, and I've already been going to town with a custom smart home setup, so we're going that route, so to speak. So I updated my smart home code to know what to do when we get a predator message and gave it a whirl. Let's see if it works. This is the first official run where the whole thing might work. Oh. Get out of here, Hawk. No chicken dinner for you. All right, so now let's see. Yes! Oh my gosh, it worked, yes! I can't believe it worked first try, that's amazing. Yay! 
Oh yeah. With that miraculously already working, it was time to make this crazy contraption live in the chicken coop. But first, a lot of these attacks occur in the dark, so step one is to get a solar powered motion detection light set up. This will help deter predators in general and also make it so our gizmo can actually see what's out there. Conveniently, from solidifying the coops, I ended up with some nice little shelves where the gizmo could hide out away from the elements. To make sure everything was still cooperating, I printed out some pictures of predators and gave it a quick test. Side note, when we do see a predator, we also record a video snippet. Get out of here, Hawk. No chicken dinner for you. I still see plenty of squirrels around. Go have one of them. Now, all that was left to do was to leave it out in the coop and let it guard the chickens, which brings us back here. As it turns out, the alert was for a possum, but you'll notice a distinct lack of possums here. I probably detected a blur and thinks it's a possum. Yep, I had come across this in testing and all kinds of forgot. We may have to adjust the sensitivity for the brush tail possum. Well, at least I got the honor and privilege of enjoying the chicken siren. Either way, the chickens are a lot better off now. If you made it this far, you're either really dedicated to chickens or my brand of crazy, so let me know what you want to see next, and have a good one.